We six foot harder, do I do this video thing. I can't touch you, can I? So we're six foot far? No, we ain't. I don't call phone. No, I ain't gonna call phone. I'll try to get all the straight up notes. I will. And that, if I got to read all that, just sign my name for it. But Taylor, you might know something. You might not know that. You don't know what to sign up for. You might look back, or you might look straight. You might look something I don't understand to help pay more interest. <laughs> so right before you have that, I can play this right here. It won't be any
were, were served. And so uh, Jennifer, I see Jennifer, but not only Jennifer, but her staff, a member of the that really, you know, we don't notice a whole lot, but yet the work gets done. And uh, the one I'm going to get to for the month of August is, I think, one of the unsung heroes in our school system. And this person is hardly, you hardly know that this person is doing her job because she does it after all. And we would like to honor tonight one of the unsung heroes in our school district. And who's the board? This is a lady that has that works very, very hard for the Board of Education. And that's one of those unsung heroes that does something that all of us, some of us wouldn't do. And that is a custodian. And we would love to recognize tonight the one that, that works very, very hard at our central office facility, and that is Ms. Elsa Monsalvo. <laughs> Woodland lost another good one. 
And that is a long time regular ed teacher and special ed teacher at Woodland, and that is Miss Nancy Bush, 40 years in education. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least of this week's, and y'all probably know where I'm going to, ladies and gentlemen, 53 years in education. I was wondering if he was going to go for the Andy Cox record, but he said no. <laughs> and long time principal, all but one of those years, as an administrator in Cannon County Schools, the Dean of Principals, Dean Robert Pitts. Come on down. He is now taking a part time custodial position. And he wanted to do it. He asked if he could do something for our school system. And he lost a very good friend of his, Mr. John Cole, back in May. And so Mr. Pitts asked, What could we do? What could he do for us? That's a servant's part, folks. And now he is Mr. Courtney Nichols, executive assistant. <laughs> yeah, I still hand but you know what? Is that? <laughs> now, I could talk a long time about the 1981 Act. I'm not going to do But one of the things of the 81 Act that uh, had to happen, and it had to, was that we had two exceptional employees who are now working for the county finance office. And we would like to recognize them. One of them was kind of nosy. He wanted to know where that PO was that I sent on the trophies. And I wouldn't tell where it was. I'd say I had sent the, the uh, executive's prerogative. And uh, I'd like to recognize Probably that's why Teresa's here is she's taking notes from Douglas James. And Douglas has been in front of a lot of school board meetings, he's been to a lot of school board meetings as the secretary designated. He does all the minutes and makes sure those are all done. And he's trained Teresa to do that. But I'd like to recognize and say this plaque. Douglas, come on down. The Kennedy Board of Education is honored to present this plaque to Mr. Douglas Jennings in appreciation of 11 years, 2 months, and 30 days from May 1st, 2009 to July 31st, 2020, as a loyal employee of the Kennedy County Board of Education. Board members Nathan Sanders, Travis Curry, Bruce Daniel, Jamie Fan, Brian Elrod, William F. Curtis, Director of Schools, on this day. August 13, 2020. Would you give our bookkeeper a short man? Congratulations, Dave. And those things are going far, they're just going up the next story. Yeah. So, uh, but we appreciate them, them so much. And we'd also like to, like to honor working for the Board of Education for appreciation of 23 years, 10 months, and 22 days. And that goes to Ms. Darlene Lee, our federal bookkeeper, and she also does other things. I had a trigger in getting here tonight, but she's here. Darlene, come up. Education is on. Ms. Darlene, 
Depreciation of 23 years, two months, 23 days, from September the 9th, 1996, to July 31st, 2020, as a local employee of the County County Board of Education, board members Nathan Sanders, James Curry, Bruce Daniel, David Van, and Brian Elrod, and William F. Curtis, Director of School, this, April, this August 13th, 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> We appreciate those very, very dedicated employees working with us. And Mr. Chairman, if we can use a minute, is all our presentation for you. Thank you. Thank Mr. Daniel? Here. Mr. Elmar? Mr. Sanders? Here. Mr. Turner? Here. Chairman Turner? Here. Mr. Chairman, you have four present, one absent. Got a couple things here, guys. A little bit controversial. Maybe not so much. Maybe. Uh, I'll have to handle them one at a time. <clears throat> Would you guys like to amend your agenda to add the math controversy to be discussed to make it a possible action on the night? Yeah. I have a second. I'll second the motion. Mr. Chairman, we can try to put this on the agenda. Item number seven. We've already covered the state control board, so. Motion made by Mr. Turney, seconded by Mr. Fan, to revise the agenda of the August 13, 2020 meeting of the Kentucky Board of Education to include pass of item number seven. Mr. Dan. Uh, Mr. Sanders. No. Mr. Turner. Uh, Chairman Fan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, three eyes, one day. All right. Uh, Mr. Wade McMackins has done quite a bit of research. Would you like to share that with us? A lot of motion to approve Mr. McMackins. Uh, I guess we could let him go. Number three, and do the same thing. I have a motion. Motion to make a second. A second. A second to make a follow up. Let's try now, Mr. Turney, second to Mr. Dan, to allow Mr. Wade, make my case to speak for four. Mr. Dan. Uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sanders. Uh, Mr. Turner. Uh, Chairman Fan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, four eyes, no days. Okay. We're going to approve this agenda as amended. I want to approve. Motion's been made. I second. I second. Follow up. Let's make up Mr. Turney, second Mr. Plan to revise the agenda of the, of the August 13th meeting of the board. Mr. Dan. Uh, Mr. Sanders. No. Mr. Turner. Uh, Chairman Fan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, three items, one day.
All right, the consent agenda is to approve the minutes of July 9th, 2020, and the July 23rd, 2020 meeting of the board. We don't have any bus to it. Approve the resolution to transfer funds from one account to another of the series for food service federal to do the purpose. And approve JD Davis as non faculty head volleyball coach. Would you guys like to separate this or load it all in at once? Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Second's been made. All right. What's that about, Mr. Sanders? Thank you about Mr. Terry to approve the consent agenda. A, approve the minutes of July 9, 2020, and July 23rd, 2020, meeting of the board. B, no bus trip. C, approve resolution of transfer funds from one account to another within a series for food service, federal, and general purpose funds. And then approve J.D. Davis at the non factory volleyball coach. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Turner. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no nays. Mr. McMahon. Aye. Apologize for uh, not being on the agenda. This is the thing that came up this Tuesday, and I appreciate you making a lot of speeches. Uh, I know there's going to be some discussions that I'm going to ask. Uh, I don't think there's anybody here or you know, ever be able to get anybody to raise their hand that would not be concerned about the safety of our speakers. Six kids through the system and have 17 grandkids. Uh, many of those have already gone through, and there's more coming. So I hope we're close to the end of that, but that's another topic. Um, we, uh, we have something before us about that that's been brought up, and I wanted to read you a few things. I got off the site today, it's an FDA site. It's, uh, it's, uh, Current as of 813 is 137 billion. We we are probably going, we're probably looking at something on the order of we want safety for our kids. And the realistic thing is the liability. Everything we do in the school system has those two sides of the coin. It has a purpose, and then there's a liability factor, and you have to cover yourself with a liability the best you can. Anybody can sue anybody over anything. We all know that. If you've lived long enough, you've seen that happen. <laughs> the best we can do is to give the public the understanding that we're going to be doing all we can do to, to provide safety for our faculty and our students. At least that's my opinion. So I'm going to bring this to you for your consideration, something to think about. Uh, in all reality, I started looking at seatbelts. All things. We all have seatbelts in our car. Federal government regulates seatbelts. Now, if I'm going to go in my backyard and build seatbelts, they're not going to hit the market that the federal government, number one, makes recommendations to me of what material is appropriate, the strength of that material, the construction of those seatbelts. They're regulated. Aunt Susie's mask she made back in the back bedroom on her single sewing machine doesn't mean a hill of beans in all reality. It's a comfort thing. Maybe that's all you can do. There's no liability attached to that. There's a lot of liability that should have There's only two masks federal government recognizes as being appropriate. And they both have surgical in front of them. One is a surgical mask. One is a surgical N95. Now, I can't 
for the lows of I N95, which is a dust mask, a surgical N95, is governed by three agencies of the United States government and three sets of laws. I have those numbers, I can bore you the numbers. But that's what we have to look at. If you're going to if you're going to have public trust, you're going to put masks on people, you better put the appropriate mask. N95 is not been approved for children. That's the biggest thing. Children and people with beards, facial hair. I worked around chemicals for 30 years. We use respirators, OSHA approved, 3M masks to protect you from inorganic and organic safety. Those were approved masks. I couldn't go down the road and bring a mask to work. The company be Guaranteed my safety. At least as, as well as they could cover themselves. So they had a liability issue. I could be fired, I didn't use the right mask. So we're going to we're going to mandate mask or not, or whatever, whether we do or not. Take into consideration that the surgical mask is the only mask that should be used in our school system. If you're going to go that way. I personally think the parents should have the right to say. My child is going to school without the mask. The faculty, that's different. But the parents themselves have to have the option to let their kids come to school with them. I do not, me personally, I would not be able to go that. That's just me. So if you're going to go, you're going to go full board, and you're going to have to buy surgical masks. You're going to have to furnish those masks every day. You're going to have to furnish those masks when they go to lunch and take it off and drop it on the floor, drop it next to the sink if you like. She picks it up, she looks at it. That's, that's a mask in the morning, mask at lunch, and that mask is done for the day. Tomorrow morning, you got to do it over again. And not reuse that stuff. And not reuse it. So I just wanted to bring that to you tonight to consider that if you open that ball of wax, and you go with the mask, Cover your liability, you need to cover the one that the government says it's totally been tested and approved by three agencies in the United States government, CDC and one of them. OSHA is the other one, and the other one I believe is the uh, Occupational Safety and Hazard uh, Department. Second thing I wanted to bring you tonight is uh, we've got a referendum that's coming up on the ballot. And my personal opinion on this referendum is that we need to give the public more time. I propose that we go to each school and have a meeting with parents, explain to them what we're looking for, what we want to do, what we can offer, how can we better the situation for our kids in the town. Tell them what the facts are and let them make a decision hear from the public at that time what their concerns are and what they do not understand and hopefully we can make them understand better of what we're trying to accomplish for the future. So if we, don't, if, we, if we fail to plan for the future, we will surely fail for the present. So we need to, we need to hold off, I believe, on this a lot. Uh, I found out today that we probably underestimated the cost. Talked to an engineer in Rutherford County, Trey Lee, he's totally involved in building schools in Rutherford County. Rutherford County right now is building schools cheaper than any county special needs. They figured out a way to do it by not over building their schools cosmetically. They're building a sound school, structurally sound, but they're spending more money on the what he calls the uh it's I never heard the term before. Uh, FLE. FLE is furniture, fixtures, and electronics. They're spending their money, they're saving their money on the building and putting their money into those three items. And those three items cost factors, it's also got the geo engineering factors built in there. So we have a piece of property, the geo engineers have to come and see if we need to build on that property first. So that's all in the cost. And just to give you an idea, right now they're building a school for two hundred twenty-five dollars per year, and they're the cheapest 
square foot price. Maybe I'll know this week. They've got those kind of techniques that are coming in high price accounts. So, so that's just an idea of uh, what you're looking at. Uh, I, uh, I would like you board members to understand also that if the plan, if you plan to build a new consolidated school, it's approved and it's put into action. There'll be meetings with the school board, there'll be meetings with the commission, there'll be a design team formed by our architectural firm. They'll have to send out bids, and from the first time dirt is moved and it's to the time a school of power walks through the door of the school, it's going to be about two and a half to three years. And I figured a school for uh, 112,500 square feet that will cover a thousand. And the initial cost for just that building is 25 million plus. Uh, the architectural fee would be about a million seven. The furnishings would be as much as three million, and we can cut that by utilizing maybe existing equipment. And if you kick that figure down the road, 27 million dollars down the road, three years, 38 million. If you started today. So I just want you to keep that in mind that taxpayers of this community need to understand where we're coming from. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, giving up to another question, please. Where did you get the information that only N95 masks are appropriate? Because the information I'm getting from the city that it says cloth masks are approved, and they actually give detailed instructions. On the effectiveness of the cloth mask, it's so detailed. So, I'd like to know where you got the information that only well, in what I'm saying is appropriate. Travis, what I'm saying is it's uh, not true. What I'm saying is cloth masks are not, they're not. When both parties are wearing them, the CDC has specifically said it's effective. It says here CDC recommends wearing cloth safe covering. Public settings where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. Then there is a significant community safe transmission. I'm reading that off the CDC's website. That's right. That's right. So That's I understand right. that the 95 masks are more effective. The fact is, if both parties are wearing false masks, it mitigates the COVID 19 period. That's what they say. No, it's not. Okay. not saying where do you get the Where do you get this? FDA, which is overall. I'm looking at CDC. FDA is overall. Okay. That's the mother of all. So the CDC is mine. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm going by what the CDC says. Okay. <coughs> and our school is it's following right. what the CDC recommends. Well, I'm I'm saying saying the the there. Listen, I arrest people with liability. Okay. I do that every day. That's a fact of life. I do that every day in my job. Okay. The fact is, I'm going off what the CDC says, and our school system and our people in our schools have worked very hard to follow the guidelines of CDC, and that's what I'm going by. And that's why I'm an advocate for masks. I understand, I'm wearing N95 masks. They have specifically said that we have to reserve N95 masks for professionals. So I, I, I have N95 masks on right now. I'm a professional, okay? Unfortunately, I've been provided that with some have not. But there's been no evidence to prove that I mean, that two people wearing cloth masks is not effective. Period. And I'd like you to show me where that's not true. There's no there's, there's been no evidence to prove. You show me where the FDA uses cloth face covering shit that's nothing but monthly. You tell me where the liability is just in there. Okay, we'll guarantee nobody would be told that wearing cloth masks. Rutherford, I say that. Rutherford Wilson, the chair. Okay. I don't care who says what. I understand. You can't guarantee. You can't guarantee the teachers of this too. Well, and the and the students. My state is not market. It's not a cloth mask. I'm reading you what the CDC says. I'm reading you. My state is not popular. This is the FDA. Okay. 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 Understand the FDA, brother. We're going to talk to the CDC. Doctors have learned that a good proportion of those. Who are spreading this disease are people without symptoms and they are spreading the virus through just talking. Therefore, we are now recommending that people wear masks to prevent their droplets from getting out. 
We always knew that masks were good at preventing the spread of your droplets to others. What we learned, which was a new and has changed our thinking, that the virus can spread from asymptomatic people who are coughing into the mask and to protect others from your droplets. The risk of touching your face is still there, but if we stop the asymptomatic spreaders, that would make a significant impact on spread. The, the, during the press briefing on Tuesday, Education Commissioner Penny Swin said the department is encouraging face covering to one all schools. And again, in an editorial published in the Journal of American Medical Association, the CDC reviewed the latest science and affirmed that the wearing of masks are a critical tool in the fight against COVID-19 that could reduce the spread of the disease. This is increasing evidence that face covering to help prevent people who have COVID-19 from spreading the virus to others, this is quoted from the CDC. We are not defensive against COVID-19, says CDC Director Robert Redfield. Face coverings are one of the most powerful weapons we have to slow and stop the spread of the virus, particularly when used universally in a community setting. All Americans have a responsibility to protect themselves, their families, their community. The cab, Wilson, Williams, and Rutherford, and I know Clinton County have 36 uh, 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 physicians in their community that wrote a letter to the board begging them to mandate masks. That's what I'm going on. So that's where I rest my case. You're not by one clock. I rest my case. In the ER. How do number three practice? We've already said to the uh, item number three. Is that what it's empty? Uh, we had a person speak the other night. He gave his reasons. Uh, is he here tonight? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve that exemption. Do I have to thank you? Second. Second to make. Uh, motion made by Mr. Stansky and Mr. Turner to approve the zone exemption of Abriana Hockley from the Woodland School to East Side Elementary School. Mr. Baker? Aye. Uh, Mr. Sanders? Aye. Uh, Mr. Turner? Aye. Uh, Chairman Baker? Uh, Aye. Mr. Chairman? Four ayes, no nays. Okay. And you guys can ask questions about this. Mr. Chairman, I like I like option A. It's, uh, option A is uh, probably not going to fly across the street. So I uh, understand that. Uh, if option A would be the policy, it does more savings than any other of the, of the others over a period of time. And I know that may be controversial because of uh, the future, but plan A does include all the measures of all students, including the West off the body. Uh, plan B, uh, Measures at Campaign High School would be the ground and West Buffalo Line. And Plan C includes measures at Campaign High School and Woodbury Ground. So, uh, of course, Plan A has the most credibility of the ESI folks, the trained uh, representatives, and it would go to, it would go to uh, uh, more uh, expensive time. And the more time you have, the more so you get with the lighting, et cetera. Uh, plan B, again, if you can't get to high school, good very grammar, and baseball field, it uh, is a little iffy because of the baseball field. And then plan C does, uh, will probably roll after the ESI. If I could uh, ask Mr. Baldwin to see if we're going to train the top of the to speak to more quickly. Uh, the Good evening, board members. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, again, as uh, Director Curtis was talking about, you have the option to run your job through this for thoroughly through tonight. Uh, and, you know, of course, then when you look at Plan A, you are looking at saving $1.3 million as a firm and saving over $2 million of improvements done in the schools without burdening the tax. This is a guaranteed program. It's not going to cost the taxpayers a penny to train the guaranteed people. If we fall short of the guarantee, we write a check. If you go over, we keep every cent over that guaranteed amount. So it's 
ultimate win win no lose scenario. It's something that is impacts every school. Yes, capital improvements done in every school with no additional dollars. Any questions you have? Right, the only one who was in Plan B would probably be if he had the ESI to the state. And that is ESI focused in the, the uh, energy efficient school division departments of state of state uh, park locations. And you think that that could come based off the alignment of labor at some point in the period of time that y'all was going to utilize in the spring? Any additional questions from the board to Mr. Mullen? He seems to talk several times. Um, he has uh, been at the office several times to uh, go over specifics with our maintenance, uh, maintenance uh, division. And uh, we have the, we have what we presented uh, the other evening. And uh, so, uh, uh, basically, I feel this is a concern because of the lighting situation where there are, there are really certain dark spots on that field. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I think the baseball field should be included in the source in the agreement with the county to lease the facility. And I think the facility makes it our responsibility to make it the safest uh, we could have we could have for our for our players. And uh, what what happened if it doesn't pass if they deny it. If, okay, what would happen, uh, Mr. Paul, if the if, if the commission just said we're not going to be this? Oh, you're talking about the ESI. Then we'd have to come up to the plan A or B. A or C. A or C. If they didn't get right. They, and, and, and what we have to do, we have to take what we gave to you tonight here. We have to go present that to the state of Tennessee. They're attacked. They're up at the space. Engineers that we have to present to the Plan C is just the Woodbury Grammar and Alaska. I'll have to summary page for you as well. Okay. 
the green the green 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 green
he says that this is the worst that he's known it to be in a long time. And I've had a lot of conversations with him about it. And uh, we're in bad shape. And I hate it. I, I wish I could wait a while right now and solve it, but I don't have the power to do that. I'm, I'm only one person. Then if you went with an eight, you could put down. So Reggie, you might want to explain if you would come up with one. Uh, you might want to explain what the process is. I uh, know we've done it in a lot of different places throughout the state of Tennessee. And just, just explain what the process is. Process is right now. We work with your staff. We love for your building. We've been working with your staff and leadership. Determine the items that need to be done in the school, prioritize them, and then we see what will self fund. Uh, this is again, you're not asking for any dollars from the county commission. These dollars are already in your budget. Okay? So all you're asking them to do is permission to do this program out of your budget. That's how it works. Uh, the next step that would be is we would get your approval tonight on this. We would go to the county commission. Show them the plan that you chose and say, This is what we were asking for you to do to help support your school. All we're doing is asking for your approval. Everything that we handle about the county school system from that point on. Then, what we do is we go to the state of Tennessee with a program wants to get the county commission approval to seek funding with the state of Tennessee and the new business school commission. That's the program is at half a percent interest right now. They are, they're waiting to hear from you. They've got this set aside for county commission. We get that approval from the county. We go to the state of Tennessee and the different school commissioners. We go to their technical advisory council. We show them our results with our energy engineer who was here the other night and our project developers who were here the other night as well. We get their approval. We can start the program. Start implementing the changes in the school. That's everything. Interior lighting that we've looked at for your classrooms, helping with other other areas that you see on the list. You're going to ask the question that happens if you go with plan A, you can cut okay. back. How do you cut back? What do you start? What, what happens? Yes, sir. If you decide to take out energy conservation measures out after this has been approved, you can do that. What the state of Tennessee is going to do also is there, we can go back to them anytime we need to. To make changes to the program. So the answer is yes, we can make these changes as the program goes, and we have for those school systems. How long does it take to get all these changes? Oh, uh, once we decide to go, we can go. It's up to you and your school board, or you, you meet the school board. Basically, how long does it take to get started? We started, we're looking at about an eight, eight month installation period to be done. The project was planned eight, eight to ten months. Have these changes and implement, have these energy conservation measures. So, and you could see the start with the buildings uh, project that the uh, board, say, for example, the high school first. You prioritize that as the first thing. Uh, prioritize, prioritize it. Yes. And then at any time they complete the stop, say, this is where you're going to stop. As we move right now, I know we've seen you a lot, but, uh, but you've not um, talked to the commission yet or made a presentation to them. We actually have made a presentation. Okay. They know what they know this is coming. Okay. And, so you might have actually talked to the attorney. Mm -hmm. And we actually took uh, Scott Slusher from the state of Tennessee Energy Efficient Schools Initiative into that meeting with us, and he spoke to them as well. They have clear understanding. Now, I don't know if I was able to say clear on that, but I don't know what you're saying. But, um, but yeah, we were over there, I don't think, what was it, uh, back in, let's say, March, perhaps? Or, yeah, it was before COVID. It was before COVID. I did. In January. January, February. January, February, we were there uh, with, with that. There were skeptics, certainly, on that. Yeah, you know, we didn't like the call. Many of them didn't like the call, but he included the other, the, uh, other the smaller schools. And, and I 
Everybody else reads why. That's the Bible's truth. Argument was for lighting, because lighting gives you gives you instant savings. I mean, it starts from the beginning, but then you start saving immediately in the lighting. And that my argument was for our elementary schools, even if you went with some consolidation plan, it may be five years out before you can do that. That's five years of lighting savings and savings of money that we could have. It's been my argument uh, all along. There's no penalties if you later on cut downgraded or cut some off. I remember why the only penalty is if we drop the project or cut the project altogether, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's where the investment grade audit is. Right now, if you move forward with the program, the investment grade audit rolls into the program. So the savings are next. I want to clarify what are we relying on as far as education is concerned in the privilege board. I mean, that's my question because uh, you can't rely on them for nothing. So. It's mainly their permission to correct the bar of the room. Yeah. That's what it is. That's the that's the thing. We may have an understanding here, but they're understanding their system story. Oh, well, your permission is to vote since they're the funding body. Yeah, I understand. And they have to approve us. Yeah. And I know you want to say that. Uh, yes. 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 You know, you know, you know, you know, you I'm gonna make a motion. I'm gonna make a motion. I'm gonna make a motion with all the plan. I like a second. Motion's been made and seconded. All of us. Mr. Baker, Mr. Daniel, seconded by Mr. Turney to go to Plan A. And Plan A is I'll read off the thing. So Plan A includes measures of all schools, including baseball field lines. Mr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Sandy. Aye. Mr. Turney. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Aaron Farias, no days. The model may proceed with plan A to the next step. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Would you like to come forward, Mr. Nichols, Anthony High School Principal, supporting the Nichols? Ms. Nichols, uh, could you tell us in regard to um, the formation of the girls' golf team? Yes, sir. We've uh, we've had three girls that are interested in participating in uh, our girls' golf team. Mr. Burris has requested to uh, be put on the agenda for tonight to uh, get approval for that. We have a It takes two to have a team. I don't have a problem with you doing that. Being supplemented to the board of coaches. Sir? Being supplemented to the board of coaches. He is being supplemented to the board of coaches. He's willing to do this. Is that right? I think he would be. I mean, to be honest. With the at the end of the day, I think you have to be able to get here. No offense to you, boy, I'm going to be doing such a job. I don't think you're going to be able to No offense to you at all. No, no. I, other obligation, I'll be back. No offense to you. No, none be none dirt for you at all. Okay. And, and it is listed in our supplement in the MOE with the Campaign Education Association and Dog period of employees or others. It's just gone. The slide was listed. I believe mean, it's broken. Is there going to be a request for 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 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 Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
He said X is succinct and he does pretty well what you want it to do. Things uh, like uh, any, any of those three. Uh, he said it's much more succinct than uh, what we had originally submitted at your last meeting. So uh, you can look at uh, sample one, sample two, and sample three. And here are the three possible variations in the summary of the resolution for the number of and I'm just telling you when you read those or, or, or not, I think everybody can look at those and see those, right? You want to read them? I can read them. I can read them. Sample number one, shall resolution number one of the commission passes. Passed by the County County Commission, which increases the local real tax from blank to blank to approve, for or against. Sample number two, shall resolution number blank. Be approved, which increases the local wheel tax in Cannon County from blank to blank for each motor driven vehicle owned by residents of Cannon County proceed and requires the person to be increased to be used for blank or or against. Sample number three shall resolution of the Cannon County Commission be approved, increasing the local motor vehicle privilege tax from blank to blank for the purpose of blank or or against. We've got sample number one, sample number two, sample number three. Or we can see what we have back. Which we've been advised against to make sure we have uh, plenty of arsenal, I guess, a little bit of arsenal in regarding to specific cost of any type of building program in Kansas. And again, the cost, if I can tell the cost of running a, a special election, because here's what's going to occur. You're going to have a November, November election for the United States and ICC Senate that's going to be going on in November. Okay, after that point, there are no law, no there are no, no elections at all. So we also on that ballot will be locally in the series of the mayor election and all the election year. So you're not going to have any elections between November of 2020 and November of 2022. So that's the, the difficulty in the putting on a special election will be uh, about approximately twenty thousand dollars to do it. So so and then that would probably have to be approved by the commission also. But I'm just telling you that is the reality of either now, 2020, or 2022. And in 20, the 2022 ballots coming up, you will have a primary, uh, primary slant general election in August of 2022, and then you would have a uh, governor of the Florida election. Uh, in November of 2020. Can you do some former life if we if we are no elections? Have a governor slate in 2022? Correct. And by that time, it wouldn't be a criminal basis. Depends on who you ask. Uh, that's, that's true. It's going to be building costs continually go up. As well as salaries and other costs that run the school system go up. What is the deadline? And I apologize for the date. They recessed the meeting. They recessed the meeting. They recessed the meeting. Monday, Monday the 17th. When do we have to August 20th. That's the deadline by the OH Commission to move the normal number of the ballot. And their meeting is the 17th. Their meeting is the 17th. And they have to approve it in the office. That is correct. Yeah. 
order to meet that 20, the Michigan Railroad to meet all the seven people on the one thing on the agenda, and that is the roof tax. Yeah, sounds like we need to fill in the blank.
my personal opinion is, is that we are on a dead end street, regardless of whether you're for consolidation or not. I've already spoken my piece on that. Uh, we're dead end either way. The voters are not going to upgrade the increase. The commission doesn't want to get a tax increase to the landowner, so we are all on a dead end street. Hear me out what I'm saying this right now. It's not about that, it's about the school. Yes. It's 
You don't take these kids and you don't put them in another building. Women was built in 1966. I don't care how many times they had on there. It's a 1966 building. I can't remember what else. I can't remember the dates. I had them all in front of me. Those schools are nearly going to be at the past. Woodland has 20 new building permits in that community. Those going to fill up. And we're going to be hung out to dry if we don't get this done because there's talk all around about a gate, a new gate. I'll be honest with y'all, I'm trying to be first on the list. This passage, I'm first on the list. I get my money in Southern County, County Education. If I don't, they're first. We're hung out to dry. That's all there is to it. You're, 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 kids, my friends, you're high and dead again, like we've been for so long. And you're going to be there. And how you survive it, how you get by, I don't know. We'll have old buildings full with kids, and nobody will really raise taxes to help. There you are. You want to try to fight for something better? That's what I've tried to do for three years. Don't just leave it the way it is. That's all I got to say about it. I can make mention of the bill that Chairman was saying. What the community has to understand, too, is I spent many years over the Sheriff's Department. I've, I've been over there budgeting and over there budgeting and failed. I went over it, I looked at it, spent time home with it. I work there, I work payroll, I know. I'm going to tell you that the jail is going to cost a lot more than they can ever fashion a bill to ever be if it's ever done. I can tell you, it's going to be expensive. And you're going to pay heavily for it as taxpayers. I own property in the county. I'll tell you, it's going to be high. And it's going to happen. It's, and there's another thing. It's not a matter of if the bill is going to be built, it's a matter of when it's going to be built. And it will be built. I don't want to say in that two years, it's going to have to be built. The state can come in, take over. They're over capacity. You've got inmates that are sleeping on the floors. They're sleeping in, in, in the hallways. They're, they're lack of staff, everything. I'm not going to get into that. That's a money problem over there. The county is in a money crisis. And it, guess what? It affects us too. That's what, I, that's what I was telling the chairman. It affects us. Well, I, I understand. I'm just saying. The county commission's not going to give us any more money. They're not going to give us a dollar more than what they're getting. The they're they're on what they're getting. The people of County County can have to go to the police office. And I don't disagree with that. And I said, although although I had my reservation of consolidation and closing of the school or, or whatever that might be, I'm fine with majority rules on that. And I guess we'll see what the majority says because I just feel like we're back off to the corner. But you know what's going to happen if if we don't if no if it doesn't act in taken, then leading into the next school year, that a school will close. That's what will happen. A school is going to close. It's going to close. And I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to hold it. But that's that's going to be out of my hands. Or it's going to it's going to force my hands. Anything else? I think we're all in agreement. I, I looked at it over here. I don't see the reason I think the school is an option. Uh, I mean, it's just like somebody said, you know, take a few, let's say, off the woodland and put them in each side. It doesn't make the place at all. Yeah, slide over a few years. But, you know, and what side? I mean, it's that line can extend it in terms of or not. I mean, any way you look at it, I just don't think we're telling is it's an option. So, Mr. Chairman, I as well as some of this that are this way right now. We went through the portable situation in the 1990s. And some of you out in the audience like saw you in the and I understand some of us are still, some some of our specials are still in the 
that were still on our campus from the from the 1990s. You know, you've got a situation at, at East Side with the library there. Woodland has the Woodland, y'all have uh, your specials out there, art and and pre-K art and speech and your specials that are out there. Uh, we just removed the portable uh, just last, last year from Short Mountain, and they're still got a portable there at Short Mountain. I mean, everybody still has West Side still has portable. You got the all on at the very end. It's very now there. What your specials there? So you've got the permanent portable where a lot of your pre ks are located, correct, Ms. Collins? And, and so I, I've been in, I've got a portable. I was the first one picked up at West Side. They had a demonstration there. And I, I got kicked out. I was the first one picked up in the portable. I understand it. I was out of the country. The ladies booted me out, so I got out. So, so I, I'm just telling you this. And a commissioner, and the reason I said people the D word portables is a commissioner said that's what you can do. And I said, okay, your portables are going to be, you know, they're 20 something years old, right? And some of them may be desperate work, correct? Principles. And I get some amens, everybody, but Emily said, yes, those portables are in rough shape and they've been permanent, permanent, really permanent buildings instead of portable buildings. But I will tell you this, portables are not the answer. And if that's the answer for some, is to keep putting the kids in portables. And I'm vehemently against that. But that is, that is a solution by, by, by what I was doing. And, and so I, I'm, I'm, when you talk about rezoning the standards, I agree with that. You look at rezoning, you're going to be rezoning, and you're not going to have enough funds. You're going to have to find room somewhere. And a, a portable, ladies and gentlemen, will cost you. A box of approximately a hundred thousand dollars per day. And what, how long, how far will a hundred thousand dollars go on, on school construction? And that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Correct. So that, that, there's the situation, you know, I, I know nobody wants to pay higher. Uh, I'm a taxpayer, I'm going to pay this little tax and it won't go up on me, but Guess what? I'll be glad. I'll be glad to do that for the students who can't get sued and to push us forward. I didn't even know that from the answer. I know that I'm speaking for the truth right here. The county commission, I don't want to speak for all of them, want to fool us into believing. We're keeping taxes low, man. We're not raising taxes. But let me tell you what, we're fixing to pay dearly, regardless. And their idea of this low taxes pool is just, it's all a bunch of pool, is what it is. And we're going to have to pay regardless because the reality of it is we can't keep working on the money forever. It doesn't work that way. And I know they're worried about getting reelected. I could care less about that. I, could, I don't care two things about that. And it, it, some people are so wrapped up in politics, it's sickening. And we're paying the price for that mess. I promise you, it won't wear the taxes. Get over that, you know. It, it's it, we're over this. It costs money to operate, period. And these commissioners need to be here and this to the public. They get they give you this false impression that, that we're gonna keep taxes low. Let me tell you what, let me take a promise to you. You're fixing to pay later. If you don't pay now, you're gonna pay later. And everything we're discussing here on this table is gonna cost money. If it's not, regardless of whether we decide to consolidate or decide to continue on what we're going, when we show this tool, it's gonna cost this money. And, and we're going to have to figure out how, where, to, where to get it from. And and it, it, it's just absolutely sickening that we are at the second call of politics here. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Mr. Chairman, if I can, um, I don't believe they plan on cutting off the license here. However, the state has certainly been observing what the state is doing. Uh, BEP is probably going to be looked at again. Uh, this year is. Uh, at this next general assembly, you'll probably be at a very interesting time. Uh, and BET is, is scheduled you know, by, by all estimations, BET will be looked at in some form or fashion again. Now, whether that's good for us or bad for us, I don't know. Uh, 
so that's the first of all, nobody has it. And then COVID has, uh, as any observer of national politics will, will tell you, COVID put us in a tailspin. We literally did not know it was a tailspin. And so I don't know how long, much further that even the state portion is going to uh, assist us. And, and I'm not trying to be gloom or doom, but, but there again, uh, your larger counties are wanting to more and more and more from the state. They think they're being good. Well, what we've been used as an example in the county has, but we've also been used as an example at the state where our taxpayers go to the neighboring county and we get nothing when they stand in the neighboring county. Uh, you have heard that argument before, but I want to tell you just to think about the DPP also as, as we move along in the, in the process. And our next few board members coming out, and I will try to educate them on the DPP uh, as, as part of the organization process. I think sample number two, Mr. Chairman, is the way to go. Uh, and y'all fill in the blanks. Uh, shall resolution number blank be approved, which increases the local real tax, full tax in Cannon County from blank to blank for each voter uh, driven due from those blanks to blanks of dollars for this dollar amount to this dollar amount. For each motor vehicle driven on by residents of Cannon County, this so every part of the proceeds of the increase to be used for school construction. That's what I would say. School what? School construction. You don't say the C word, but yet it is going to be the last for school construction. But some would want a referendum. In fact, it was, it was put all in this. Uh, some commissioners also mentioned it that it should be, the salvation should be put up to, to a vote too, as an opinion poll. I mean, if we don't build a school, like you're saying, there's going to be some salvation. That means unfair closing of a school and moving those kids to another school. That's what's going to happen. Bottom line. So, yes, I understand. And I don't want that to happen. I preached on it. Did I not? I wrote a letter on it. I thought on it. Stayed up at night. And I don't want that to happen, but I don't want to give anybody false promises. That, that, that's what we're looking at. Well, we know, we do know that this is the fact, and, and all these things go up every year. Mr. Jennings has been here in this for 11 years. Well, 11 years. I just said, I'm mad right on that platform. But, Things continue to go up, but we keep getting, we're going to get the same amount. It's like 2.9, 2.9, there's 2.9 million dollars that we receive from the county on top of the 12, 13 million dollars from the state. So things keep going up, and that's what we, therefore, the gap has continued to be. And here we are in 2020, and the gap continues to widen. And we'll continue to widen, like the chairman stated. You know, eight percent is eight percent. So going back to the, what, what's here on the, the sample number two, you're, 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 the longer you wait, the longer that the, the more the cost goes up. Not only the building cost, which we reckons stated there, but also in salaries. That's going to continue to go up. So we're going to have even a bigger gap uh, there. But there's, that's my that's my recommendation in the sample number two. Yes, they go up now, y'all are filling the lungs. We should put the uh, two, two referendums over there. The sales tax is already on. No, 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 I know that. Okay, it's like three. Uh, they use this three. They're using this school construction. We should understand that uh, we could put over a resolution for about policy consolidation. If you want to do that as an opinion vote, it would have to come from this body. Uh, that was a suggestion by a commissioner that just for an opinion poll. It wouldn't have any binding. It's, it's like what we did a few years ago when we said which part, which uh, 
the north, the, the middle of the south version uh, around Woodbury is the uh, um, bypass. And they put that out there with the Vineyard Road. We don't have every member of the community in there on budget to buy food. It's strange that we don't have any more people on the field in the day like that. It's just a load in the way that we're supposed to make some decisions and just a couple of people can have. And that's not a good thing. Thank you. I wish we had more time to, to talk about this, and I know we're on the train. Like I said, it's over the fans, but we'll say, I can already say what we're going to say, but anyway, whatever. Not whatever, but you understand where we're at. This is the story we got. So, yeah, so I'm going to go. Mr. Turner, can I ask Mr. Turner, the secretary? Mr. Turner, what's your motion? The, the the sample number two. Sample number two, yes. Okay, if we if you do that, shall most of the resolution that'll be up to the commission by the first of this evening. He approved which increases the local wheel tax in Cannon County from blank to blank. So you got to fill in the blanks. That'd be my next part. What part of that motion do you want to do? $50 an hour for the county. We're using the wording of uh, construction and math, correct? That would be my recommendation. Yeah. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Was made by Mr. Turney, seconded by Mr. Fan to send the following wording to the Cannon County Commission regarding the fuel tax. Sample number two, shall resolution number blank be approved, which increases the local wheel top tax in Cannon County from $50 to $85 for each motor vehicle driven or excuse me, owned by residents of Cannon County, Tennessee, and requires the proceeds of the increase to be used for school construction or for against. Mr. Daniels. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Turner. I will probably know how much it's paying for me to go get on this. Um, I don't like it. Um, I have a pretty good idea how that's going to turn out, but I just feel like that we're working with what we have and we're in a bad spot, so I'm going to say Chairman Payton. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no days. This will go to the Commission on. I will put, put that as the wording if I can do some editorial on uh, the wording on that and do the commission on August 17th. And as part of that, uh, now the motion's passed, uh, we will need to have some figures for members of the commission, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, if you, with the permission of the board, I'd like to continue to work on those figures uh, with Mr. Street, our architect, and the others, and get to work on those. Uh, Get to work on those figures if I can have the board's indulgence to do so. Maybe that's a motion. I don't need a motion. I don't need a motion just to make the post. We've got our commission to continue working on this, and, uh, and the wording will not, will not change, but the figures that they want will still have my heart asking the commission to work on. Uh, I don't know who said it. Huh. Let's talk about face masks. Uh, I wanted to say I appreciate the commission and Mike to come and speak to us this evening, and I appreciate his concern, and I want to get to the board. But I want to clarify what he was talking about about the FDA. I've done my homework. I 
understand what he's meaning about the fact that the um, N95 masks are the only ones that are approved. I realize what he's saying, but I want to make sure the public understands this, and I'm going directly to the FDA here. Uh, I'm, I'm referring back to what he was referring to. The FDA received questions about original face mask EUA posted on April 18th. Well, this is current. Uh, FDA updated and reassured reissued the EUA to clarify the face mask, including cloth face coverings that are authorized by the EUA, EUA are only authorized for use of the general public and healthcare personnel at source control. The face masks are not authorized to be PPE personal protective equipment. Meaning they are not a substitute for filtering face to respirators or for surgical face masks. I am not arguing that fact. What I mean by source control, what I was trying to explain, and it explains this in detail on the FDA website, source control means preventing transmission of infection through a person's respiratory secretion, which are produced from speaking, talking, or sneezing. Face masks, including cloth face coverings. Help with the source control by covering the wearer's mouth and nose. COVID 19 may be spread through respiratory secretions by individuals who may or may not have symptoms of COVID 19. The bottom line is you will not find a government entity that will advocate the not wearing of masks, period. Now, like I have said, you can if and or but it all you want to. The fact is, if both people are wearing masks, it mitigates COVID-19. Is it 100% pre preventable? No. Does it mitigate it? Yes. Are every single county around us doing it? Yes. We need to open our ears to that and stop making excuses. That's my point. And we're bringing up the FDA. Okay, I'm reading off the FDA website. I'm bringing up their, their literature. This is exactly what I'm looking at. I understand that it's not PPE, I get that. But we're looking at source control here. My daughter, seven years old, she wore a mask to school all day. She didn't wear a mask for her protection. She wore a mask in case she's asymptomatic and she's preventing herself from protecting someone else. That's the bottom line, and there's no argument for that. I mean, that's that is coming from the profession. I'm not a doctor. I'm not wearing a mask because I feel like I personally should. I'm wearing a mask because it's what the professionals are telling me to do. We have to open our ears to that. That's what I'm saying. We can be blind to it if we want to. I would love to hear an excuse tonight as to why we cannot wear a mask. That that would that it would increase the transmission of COVID. Now I know that there we can make regulation have a regulation where there may be a point where you know we have social distancing and we have to wear a mask. Or certain situations where there's a burden, I don't know, I that. But there is not a single argument where you can say you have two people that are less than six feet apart, they're not wearing a mask. And if they were, were both wearing a mask, that, that it was less likely for them to get COVID. I don't care how you angle it. All the Vanderbilt left the PSA, Vander, Vandy just put out a PSA this week wear a mask. St. Thomas Hill, wear a mask. CDC, wear a mask. FDA, wear a mask. They're all telling us wear a mask. Commissioner Quinn, wear a mask. We should not ignore that. The Commissioner of Education is telling us that we should be wearing masks. I don't know how else I can put it. I mean, it's not a matter of personal preference here. It's a matter of what the professionals are telling us. I end my discussion there. If you say no, I would love to hear the argument. That's where I stand. I have nothing more to say. I'm ready for a vote on it. I raise the mandate. And I have a suggestion here, Coffee County, masks be worn in all areas, including transportation, individuals are not separated by at least six feet. If distancing is greater than six feet, the use of masks is at discretion of the school system personnel, example, bus drivers, teachers, administration. Documentation is required for masks for medical exemption. Masks uh, used during an extracurricular activity will be under the guidance of the CSAA. And that's a similar Similar to all the other, every one of the counties are doing every one of them. So I think we've got a problem if we're not doing that. I'm not really sure the last time that we disregarded what the Commission of Education was telling us, what the telling us to do. I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. But I think that if we don't mandate it, the fact is it's not going to happen. 
kids are not going to wear it. It's just it, they're not going to do it. That's the bottom line. They're not going to. You'll have one or two kids out of 50 that will have it on. And it's time we step up to the plate. What I'm speaking for right now is not popular. I'm sorry. Sometimes this is my job and it's not always popular. And sometimes what I speak for is not popular and I know it's not. But I'm going to speak for what I feel is right and I'm going by the direction of the plane. That's my bottom line. I'm up for discussions with other board members if they have any other suggestions or any, anybody else in the building that wants to say anything. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Any other questions? Sure. And I know she, I know she said that. Okay. I understand. She did say that, but I know. But I'm saying, like you were, like you were mentioning, we make some fun of the law, and I think that we're going to do it for middle school. We're going to be on middle school. We're going to do it for six eight. We're going to fall. That's my opinion. The CDC and the FDA, like you brought up, they're all saying wear masks. They're all saying wear masks. So, 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 why are we turning away the legislation? Why are we turning away? For what reason? What's the, what's the, what's the so, there's nothing that, there's no research I've done to say it doesn't prevent or mitigate COVID 19. There's been no evidence of that. None. None. It doesn't, I, I want somebody to tell me where it's not. So, if, if, if there's a board member tonight that wants to vote no, I would love to hear an explanation of why they want to vote no for it. There's no, there's no legitimate reason. Our kids are our most important safety. That's why we're here. We're, we care about it. And the idea of us saying no to that blue book, that's all I gotta say. Think about it before you make it. Have you read the dangers of what it does to kids by wearing a carbon monoxide? Uh, what doctor has said that? Can you tell me the doctor who said that? Tell me what doctor said that. I'll write off the Okay, I wanna hear it. Go ahead. Tell me. Where? CDC and FDA saying no. He brought up the FDA and I I contradicted him on FDA's website. So tell me where a doctor just said that you're saying carbon monoxide book. Where's that where's that happen? Where's it at? I'm wanting to hear it. I'm up for discussion. I don't know. Exactly. So don't bring so the CD. It, okay. So the CD says it's recommended where so let me ask you a question. Do you have an N95 mask? Yes, I do. So you're a professional. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So since you believe in these face masks and you're a professional, you care more about our kids about your death than you no, do sir. our kids. My child wore a face mask. No, no. I'm not wearing a cloth mask. My child wore a face mask to kill, not protect her. That's to protect others. I was around somebody that had to go for six feet without a mask. And I didn't. I'm ready for both. You can confer with Williamson, uh, uh, and Wilson, and Rutherford on why they do that. Ask them why. This ain't Rutherford County. Okay. Why? Our government hasn't even issued this. I'm ready for both. I make the motion to mandate masks. How many cases? How many cases are in I don't have the numbers. Like the okay. Well, they were down. 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 So, so we're I'm ready to make the motion. So, you're personally doing full masks. I'm going to CDC. 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 I'm going
I'll try the easy transition for these students since we're back to school. So now we're going to put this on you. All right. Now I, I'm all about a compromise. If we need to work in the hallways and the common areas, things like that, that's what we need to do. Let me ask you this: Have you ever tried to teach a first grader sound? The difference in the sounds with the mask on? I think it's hard for me to understand the old thing. You say the sound mm, and the sound mm, with the mask okay. on. Not to mention the virtual learners. What does this mean? Like, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm saying you've had plenty of time. You've been around all evening. We've all been here with Travis, and I'm gonna your opinion. I'm a full time job, including this. We all so do I. And I appreciate what you do because I know that you are passionate about teaching students, and I said that from the get go. But so are we. And not every, I mean, I saw, I saw the poll that we received yesterday, I saw the results. 64% okay. is that doctor? Is that doctor too special for giving this opportunity? Yeah, I can get online right now without any doctor. Why is the CDC recommending us to do it? Did you just let her finish? Why? I'm asking you why they're telling us this. Why? I'm just saying. Why? I'm just saying. If we can compromise and we can say, hey, I'm with you. Let's do it. Why? Why? Because we need to get this done. Why? Because I'm with you. So when they're in the classroom, you're going to have them apart. You're not going to have them like between me and David. Well, they don't do like that, right? 20 to 25 kids. I mean, you know how hard that is. Like, like I said, I wish that masks were our only problem, and I wish we were as passionate as math as we are over school closing. Why are we not having this conversation about school closing and us not having funding? We're, we're going to fuss about masks. School closing is way more important right that it, I, to think that we can argue over masks, but we're looking at a school closing. Hey, really? Right. Right. I mean, you know okay. Not, I, I'm making a motion for you. All I'm asking is please consider how it affects the learning in the classroom. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Mr. Curtis, you're here. The results I was asked to uh, to go and to do the uh, survey, uh, I'm going to ask you to go with uh, all of the staff that you did, uh, that was sent out to everyone uh, that's uh, had the uh, email address in our staff. This is staff. And the results there were basically 65 35 for both student staff, which was not to wear a mask among the employees. Now, I want us to talk about the uh, some statistics that were mentioned here. In our reopening plan, if you not look at the reopening plan, this is the revision, the 811 revision of the reopening plan on the website. Uh, please go and download that and look at that because that's what we're going by. CDC guidelines, the NPC Department of Health Task Force did this with representation from all stakeholders. On our metrics for school level determination, and we got this, we got this from the NPC Department of Health. That's what we got. Metrics, whether we're green, yellow, or red. And right now, there were from today at two o'clock, by the way, so everything changes on the Department of Health website. Okay, 58 active cases right now in Kane County. And I'm using, uh, I don't care to tell uh, the population figures that I use from the U.S. Department of the U.S. Bureau uh, estimation for Kane County to population 14,678. So 14,678, and we have 58 cases. So if you do the math on that, that would be 0.39514%. So 0.39. So we are in the green, 0.5 is the health department's recommendation in, in regarding to the percent of the community that the community affected. So it's 0.39. Okay, low, low, and we're still in the low spread. And those two figures are determined by the local health department. Now, what I did was go back through and to take this even locally to apply it to our school. Here's what we did. I took the active number of cases of students that we have right now in our schools that were reported to me as of five o'clock today. Okay, I took that and I took the figures that you have in front of you. 1838 is our rough total right now. Okay. 1838 is our rough total for students. Whether this is learning or whether they're in school or whatever, I took that. 
There are four active cases of students in their system right now. Now, those exposures, talk about that in a second. So, four over 1838, that gives 0 0.21762. So, we're still below spread even among our students for active cases. Yes, yes, Mr. Brown. The four students, is that counted as a student? I don't get into that, so that's the other part. So I don't get into that. I report this every day. Great spot. Okay. Okay. Yes, Mr. Now, we have, also have five students that have had exposure. Okay. And when you divide that by 1838, you'll be in it again 0.27203%. So still in the green. We apply it to our students. Now, it gets a little more interesting when you add the four active cases plus the five exposures that have been reported right now, and that would give you nine. So nine divided by 1838 would give you 0 0.48966. So 0 0.48966, again, less than 5%. Okay, but getting up there total toward, you know, toward the yellow a little bit. Now, let's talk about staff. We have one staff member of an active case right now. One. Okay. We have 311. I had Ms. Tristan Lewis go over our personnel directory and counted this. we got all staff, including bus drivers and cafeteria workers, all staff is 311. One out of 311 is 0.32154%. Still in the green. Okay, we have three teachers, staff members, excuse me, that have been exposed. Okay, and so when you add that, that is a little higher 0 0.94, 96, or 63% is for those three that are exposed. Now, if you add just like I do with the students and the, uh, the students with the active cases and the exposure, that would lead to four. And 4 over 311 is 1.28617%, and that puts us in the red if we follow that. So we're, we're in the green pretty well for the community and our students. We get to staff, and I've said this numerous times in numerous, uh, in numerous places. It's not going to be the students that are going to put us in the red, but our staff. It does. It's what's going to get us. Into, into the red. So if you if you take the four and, and divide it by three the three eleven, one point two eight six one percent. So you're we're, we're looking at the red, and then it's going to be hard as if more adults get get the disease, then get the virus, then it's going to that's what's going to close us down, or we can show school down. Or, or go into some other drastic measures. Now, after this, we have 180 days that is still required by the state of Tennessee. Okay, and they're expecting seven hours, 180 days. I'm not saying, like I said last night, not seven hours in front of the computer screen, but that, that's, that's a different, whole different thing. But that's what the state of Tennessee, the state legislature is not going to come off. We're still going to be required for 180 days. So those are that's the front figures that I have to be in the green. So the first of all, have to do with the mask argument. Okay, the mask discussion is this. Again, sixty-five thirty-five is the survey of employees. They're very concerned. Employees are very concerned. I've heard throughout the district, it's it's the lower grades. It's hard to put a first grader in a mask. It's just that simple. And I have the authority as director of school to make mandate mass for staff. I have the authority under, under the authority that you give me as the one employee, do it for bad employees, for all staff to make masks. Okay. As this continues to get into the red with staff, then I think you have an argument for staff. Okay. I think you have an argument for staff. Students, you're still in the green. Okay, but the problem is with this now, we've not had a full day with everybody there yet. That's coming tomorrow. And so when you get into that aspect, 
We need to get more, more students together. But, but the situation is, is keeping the key out of the room. The commissioner said two things, mask for the student and high school. This was from her uh, thing yesterday. The webinar, we got, we got Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the webinar, one o'clock. Okay, yesterday's webinar, she said, this is three things we'll talk about. One, mask. Okay, for, for middle school, strongly encourage mask for middle school and high school. Second thing she talked about is the six foot distance being required. See? The recommendation. She was saying, keep them away because the CDC guidelines is for exposure is six feet and longer than 10 minutes. That is the exposure guidelines. Okay, so that's the minister said. Talking to directors, here's my advice to you. Here's my recommendation to you. Mask for high schoolers and for uh, middle schoolers. And then two, second thing, social distancing, six feet apart. And then, thirdly, she said, daily communication with the health departments. Michael Raylan and I, who is the director of Kent County Local Office of Tennessee Department of Health, and I are in daily communication. Well, as he is with the daily communication with our coordinators, he will. So, what does that, what does the data tell us? What does the data say? I've given you the data, and this is the data. And I think what was mentioned a moment ago is, is I believe, if you're going to be within six feet of someone as, as an adult, or that you have a mask on, that's not, that's what I'm going to be doing. To have a mask on, find it in six feet, get them 10 minutes long with somebody, then guess what? That's the first place because mask do. The arguments are, are to and fro in regard to that. So I think I think our staff members uh, need to be very careful, six feet, uh, because that's what's happened in other counties that got started before us. That has been the problem, not necessarily the students, but the staff. So your staff is what is what I am very, very concerned about in the of schools in, in keeping some. I've got like I say, we've got we've got right now four individuals, but one one active and then three have been exposed. And now we we've had other teachers that have, have come back after after having COVID. And I told y'all the last time I was here in our special call meeting when we adopted a reopening plan, one of my best friends died of COVID. And it's not easy. And I, I, you know, I, our, our priority here for our schools is preparing kids for their future. Do that, just doing that by being by doing excellent every single day in the classroom, out of the classroom, where we're doing whatever job is doing the excellent. And then the third thing is our goal is for a safe and supportive learning environment. That is the that is the key question. So. If, if you're a, a asking the director of schools, if dealing with staff, then I think if you're going to be within six feet of someone and for a period of longer than 10 minutes, but I, I know how it is in the morning. I understand that, and especially in the classroom. But if you're in the classroom by yourself, you won't throw it. You know, I'm not saying wear a mask when you look at the empty classroom and you're there in your class. If you're going to be six feet closer in 10, in, 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 in 10 minutes, that's for the guidelines. It's not very versus guidelines. That is the CDC guidelines that put the department of bill that we do that. Uh, so that is recommendations. Masks are strongly encouraged in our plan as far as So, uh, so.
believe that we have all of our principal suspension. I'm not going to get to that. I hear of this land. I've heard the word. And my thing is, is that when we rely on the parents to do their job, that is some of the stories. And I realize that if it's now, here's my thing. And this is, this is, this, I'm speaking to myself, not for the rest of the board, obviously. No one's looking at being punished in a school for if that child is sounding out sound or whatever that might be. No one's looking to punish that child or that teacher or that principal for that situation. That's not my point here. What I'm saying is, if it's not mandated, the fact is, these children are going to come to school with no math, they won't even ask more, they'll be the bottom line. And I'm not blaming the principal for that by any means. But that's going to be the reality. It just won't happen. And I listened to the other board, board meetings with other county staff. Every single one of the counties around us all had the same argument. They said, we've got a mandate or it won't happen. We have to listen to the suggestions. Although we don't have to be here with an iron fist and do it on this, we just all have to have the understanding that we're trying to mitigate this as best we can. And we're not looking to punish teachers and, and principals. That's not what we're here to do here. We don't want to punish these guys. We don't want to do that. That's not, I don't want to do that. That's not my, that's my job to do that. And so that's not what I'm looking at here. So I understand their arguments. Uh, I'm listening to them. Uh, but I'm just saying, I'm going to reiterate the fact that we are being called on by the professionals to have masks on. That's the point I'm making. And there's no valid argument that it doesn't mitigate COVID when you have two people with masks on that are closer to six feet. That's the bottom line. And that's why I want to mandate it. And I believe that us as a board and Trisha Curtis as director of schools can work with the teachers and principals and us mitigate this. We can all work professionally and, and be cordial with one another. And we don't have to punish one another over this. Because, hey, listen, we all understand COVID is punishing anyway for all of us. Regardless of whether there's a mandate or not, it's all a punishment. It is. And I respect all teachers, all staff. I'm sorry we've had words tonight. I know, I know. I'm just being forward here. I am. And that's just constructive criticism here in this room tonight. That's fine. It's good for us to do that. But by me wanting to this done, I'm not looking at trying to punish teachers and principals. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I don't want to do that. And I believe that you all are doing what you need to do. It's not that I don't trust you. That's not that. But I'm just reiterating the fact that we are being called on to do this, and there's no legitimate reason for us not to mandate this with the understanding that yes, we can work with the faculty and staff. You know, we're not, we're not, like I say, we're not really within our fist here. We're not. But we're understanding what the PDC and, and the government and the, the doctors and specialists are telling us to do, and we're doing this in good faith for the safety and Security of our children. We have to pull out all the stops here. We can't cut these kids short. We have to be in, and it's like Ms. Kurtz was saying, the numbers we have right now, we haven't had a full day of school yet. You know, get back with me in two months and see what these numbers look like. We need to be taking every measure we can to prevent it. And that is including wearing masks. And when the parents see that we have a mandate, they're going to send their children to the child's office and school with a mask. And that's what I'm getting at. And if we don't do that, we're cutting them short. We're, we're not doing what we, we're very ignoring the advice and professionals. And we shouldn't do that. All so right, that's why I'm calling on this. Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, so I've got a question. That's right. If I may, you put some of you on the spot. Ms. Thompson, how many parent complaints have you had that matched the market? Ms. King, how many parents? Either one, students or or parents. And would it be a safe assumption that you're doing something similar to what Ms. King was just talking about? Okay. Ms. Foster, you were, were you still here? Ms. Bonnie, how many parent complaints have you had or for requests? Um, everybody's had their kindergarten orientation, I believe that's right. So those children are vulnerable. Um, when the parents came that night, 
what request would they have? So 
the fact that these are, let me start to do, when I was first talking about that, um, those of you that took the survey, I appreciate you doing that. I'll just give a little disclaimer. I did ask the experts, kept the nine valid. And my idea of an informal survey was whichever principal you can get on the phone and get some general numbers. We got yes, we got yes. So I appreciate I really do. And I said this is current enough that I know you do. So I appreciate all of you doing that. Because as you know, I've always got to hear with the facts. I don't see that we have a large case number in Kenny County. I don't care what other counties are doing. This is about Kenny County and what is that. And we don't have a problem with cases in Kenny County. Unless it would make some different, okay? How many, how many full days of school have we had of all the kids in school? How many days? How many days? Exactly. So we, that's moot. That's moot. That's not an argument. But what we're doing is working. We're being proactive. That's not it. So we have an assistant department of health. Did everybody get a copy of this? Uh, no, I'm more for Okay. So this is as of the 11th. And principal also as of the 11th, which was Tuesday. Furthermore, CDC and Tennessee Department of Health recommend 14 day quarantine for close contacts, whether or not a mask is used. Okay. So a mask doesn't make a difference. But so where where can you show me where? Please, I want you to do this. You give me documentation that it shows that if two people are wearing a cloth mask, that it doesn't mitigate COVID 19. So they have to be, if one person has COVID, Nathan, they have to be quarantined. It doesn't say that the mask is mitigated. Where does it show me that, Nathan? Where? Show me where it gives you documentation to where a doctor or that or it says three doctors that it doesn't mitigate COVID 19. Where a mask doesn't matter. A person can come to school and wear a mask and be infected, but still have to be quarantined. That's what that means, Nathan. That's what that means. Nowhere can you show me to where it says specifically that it doesn't mitigate COVID 19 with two people wearing masks. They're not. It doesn't. Whether or not a mask is used. If they were already infected, Nathan, they were already infected. Okay, guys. We got another phenomenon on the table. We'll have a second. Just turn on my second one more thing. Just for a second. Just for a second. Just for a second. Mr. Nichols, you got the biggest population of students. Mr. Nichols, you have the biggest population of students in this district. You've got 500 and some odd teenagers in one building that you're going to have in the morning. Hopefully, we're not staring to the morning. Joe, Joe. About so, Mr. Nichols, would you chime in? All principals have said something. Would you would you say your concerns as the principal of the largest school in Canada? I've had some parents so far in the that have asked that they have to be I just want to hear from anyone in this room. They can provide me documentation, show me three of them to where they have proven that, that two people wearing masks doesn't mitigate COVID 19. That's what I'm wanting to hear tonight, and I have not heard it yet. Okay, he is. He's telling me, he's telling me if they come in, he just did it. I'm ready to put this in motion, guys. I'm ready. You have to tell us. Oh, I'll have a second. I'm on second motion. Motion to second. Uh, what's the name of this? Motion made by Mr. Turner, seconded by Mr. Fan, to make all masks mandatory for all students and staff. Is that your motion, Mr. Turner? Yes, that is my motion. Mr. Daniel? No. Mr. Sanders? No. Mr. 
Mr. Turner. Aye. Chairman Fran. I sent my daughter to school with a mask because I thought it was protected. That's my choice. I think, and, and guys, I have been, I, I, I felt like I've been talking to the law. I really did. There's some real good arguments of the lake. I wear this mask up here because I want to respect other people's stuff. I hate the stuff, but I wear it because I respect it. The President of the United States is not mandated to know. The Governor of Tennessee is not mandated to know. The County Executive of Cannon County is not mandated to know. Even one of those people do that, we have to do it. I'm being 100% honest with you. Here. I think you should wear them. I think the kids should wear them. I think it, I think it helps you fuck better to get rid of them. But I don't think I have the right to make you do that. I don't. It's your choice. But I'm telling you, in a lot of cases, some of these kids are asymptomatic. They're taking their temperature. They're coming to school. And in just a little while, everybody in there to be sick. But I'm not going to be the person to sit up here, and it doesn't matter. There's not enough of us here anyway. I'm not a political person. You already know I don't care what you think. But I don't think it's right for me to make you do that. So I'll pass. I'll get back to me before the video. Mr. Chairman, uh, one eye, two days, one pass. Mr. Curtis, you gave us the COVID-19 update uh, financial report. Uh, financial report is in your is in your uh, packets, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I do have uh, one thing to say. This evening is the, uh, the final evening of two of our board members, and uh, we do have a. I, I would like to make a presentation if I can, a quick presentation, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to try to split the difference uh, between here and there. Uh, I would like to say, as the director of schools, I'd like to my esteemed honor and privilege to present to Mr. Bruce Daniels, the Canton Board of Education Fund, to present this plaque to Mr. Bruce Daniels in appreciation for eight years of dedicated service to the Canton County School System, 2012 to 2020. Mr. Daniels, if you would come. Okay, you're going to, okay, she's going to get it for me. So this time, uh, Mr. Daniel, Mr. Daniel, I will pay you uh, in honor to serve with you as director of school. My congratulations on eight years serving the board of the Congratulations. Sir. Would you like to say a few words, Mr. Daniel? I think I may have run out of on this. Uh, it's been an experience, brilliant. Uh, I'll look back.
is can they work efficient? Other than you can collect with the making savers depreciation for eight years of dedicated service to can they work education? Can they get some from 2012 to 2020, Mr. Making Sanders? Mr. Um, a little bit bittersweet. Um, first, I want to thank um, thank everyone for the way on me third. Um, I always said I voted by this is one so I represent everybody. I truly love campaigns and action that everyone has. And as I look back, people let us come back to campaign and give back. And I hope that in some way, shape, form, or fashion, as we look back at eight years or when we retire, I did something somewhere to help you out. Because I always try to make an educated and form decision, not just for my three kids, but for the 18, 38 kids that we have in the city. And the fact. Uh, because you all are on the front line, y'all are doing it. Um, I don't want to do one night a month. And uh, I appreciate it. Can't hang out the day. I don't care what the numbers say. I don't care what the media says. Can't hang out the day. And I'm not so like to bring in. You've done the best you can. I appreciate it. Can't hang my heart. I may not be here the second Thursday with everyone, but I'll be watching from afar. So keep doing a great job. Thank you. Principals, what Mr. Sanders says, said a minute ago. Uh, I, I just, I just appreciate my teachers. I teach. I appreciate their principals. We have the best staff. I appreciate our administrators, staff, the central office staff. All of us are working together, together for the betterment of this system. No matter the circumstances, we're working. For, we're working hard, and, and I can't. I cannot say appreciation enough to. Every worker in this in this system. Uh, whatever you do, you're valued. And I will tell you tonight, it's my honor and privilege to be with you. Thank you. Okay, then you come early. <laughs> Guys, we got a battle in front of us. I'm telling you the truth right here, too. We're going to have to fight and do everything we can to keep the truth open. We're going to have to be careful. We're going to have to drop the eyes and talk to Steve. We're going to have to follow his plan. We're going to have to do his very best to keep the kids separated as we can. I know it's an impossible task. You've got to try. Thank you for what you're doing. Good luck. We'll have a motion to adjourn. Sure. Can I have a second? Thanks, <laughs> 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 <laughs>